Welcome back to Seriously Funny. I'm your host, Mashnor Kabir, and the sky is my teacher. This week, we talk about a small piece of advice that I'm not sure if I made up or if I complete, I'm completely plagiarizing this today. Uh, so maybe I'm doing that. I think Stephen Hawking once said, remember to look to the stars and not your feet or something close to that once in his life. And we'll talk about that a bit. But the remember to look up is a thing that I'm going to take credit for titling title of the episode me. Okay, I made that one. If you're going to quote that you put my name on it and also give them this podcast episode. But uh, since I have it sent in a while, hey, hit the buttons, uh, like, rate, comment, whatever the application you're on supports, do it. Uh, helps me out a ton. And of course, uh, share it. If you show this podcast to your friends, uh, they'll think you're 20% cooler. Uh, trust me, I read research papers. <laughs> I, one day I'm going to die from being too pretentious, uh, I swear. Anyways, on to the episode. Life isn't a single player game. I'm just going to come out with it. Usually I tease you and I spend an entire bullet point just tickling your pickle. But today, right here for this one, one time, I'm probably in probably all of Seriously Funny history. Uh, I gave it to you all raw, no rubber, full out. That's the first topic. I'm going to talk for another six to 10 minutes about it still, even though you probably know what I'm going to say. But there you go. Leave a comment and tell me how it feels. Okay. Uh, I'm sure it feels great. But Yes, life isn't a single player game. Probably, uh, you can probably surmise with your massive five heads. I have like three head. I have a tiny four. I'm wearing a hat today, but I have like a three head. It's a very, very small forehead or a very small three head, I guess. But, you know, you and your um, um, enormous five head, you, I'm sure you already have wrote, wrote, road red 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 my sc- I'm, I'm dying I'm, I'm just gonna keep reading <laughs> but if you're really cool you'll let me feel good about myself and tell you anyways uh, you see in life you come to this earth by yourself and you're probably gonna leave it just the same and yeah although one becomes enlightened by looking inwards and by finding a cave in their favorite minecraft seat and meditating there for days uh, and months until you finally realize that you're wasting your time uh, solitude is something that can be used now i want to play minecraft solitude is <laughs> solitude is something that can be used as a tool and it should be that's another episode but here's the thing when you're struggling when you're having issues when you're sad when you're in pain when you feel alone if you haven't realized this yet you're supposed to talk to people life isn't a single player game you're not a tank a healer a shooter and a swordsman you're one of these things but you're not all of them in life you find people that become your party members some of them are healers some of them are tanks some of them are insanely smarter than you and they're the reason that you pass college uh, and others are the reason you don't die during college you probably aren't strong enough or in my case smart enough to do all of these things yourself so you use other people and that's how the game was designed we can see this in your psychology i'm not going to go in depth in this episode on the science i'll save that for the episode on solitude but just to throw some unsighted figures at you chronic loneliness chronic loneliness increases your chances at a premature death by 15 percent one of the main predictors in life satisfaction is the number and the quality of your uh, personal relationships Uh, the way that you deal with mental illness is by talking to another human being and sure this human being may be trained in dealing with it i'm talking about a therapist or a psychiatrist here but newsflash you're really bad at helping yourself be less depressed when all the voices in your head are saying you suck you dirty rag you know what i'm saying if you're listening to this podcast i'm sure you've heard this before humans in general are social creatures we want to talk to people share our pain with people we want to be seen and that's not wrong it's normal can go too far absolutely don't be a simp and don't be clingy it's not a good look and even if you don't feel lonely per se you still need to rely on others you just can't do everything yourself life is way too complex for that maybe back in the days of monkey brain and fire being the greatest creation of mankind you might have been able to somehow get by by yourself 
these days, it's not, it's not going to happen. If you do anything, having other people will either speed up, improve, or both of the above the process of whatever you're doing. Uh, if you're addicted to drugs, it's a lot easier to go to rehab than just say, pills no more. <laughs> Life is hard, and it's a lot at times. And that's the reason you can't take it on alone. Sure, some things you need to look inwards for, and you can't find ultimate happiness from partying every day. You can't find true bliss from drinking with other people. Those are internal things you need to discover yourself with yourself. But whether it be college, mental health, your job, your hobbies, having someone else is usually helpful, if not satisfactory at the very least. Uh, this podcast wouldn't be worth much if not for you listening. So that's how we're in this together. I may write, record, and edit all of this myself, but you listen. And that's our dynamic here. To the point, though, when we, you have a lot of pressure on a bridge, there's two ways that we can prevent that bridge from collapsing. I'm an engineer. <laughs> I'm not a mechanical engineer. That's not my job. Or a construction engineer. Whatever, whichever one would do that. Uh, anyways, there's two ways we can prevent this bridge from collapsing, falling, and breaking, and killing a bunch of people. You know that one bridge? Look, look it up. I don't remember. I don't know what it's called, but it's this bridge. They built it, like, pretty thin. And the bridge started, like wiggling and waving and it was wild it was super terrifying but kind of funny to watch and you know now that it's over but i'm sure if you were there that would have been horrible <laughs> but yeah it was a definitely a it was a really interesting feature because you no one there's no when you see the video you're like there's no way that's concrete right that's like rubber they made a silicon bridge no it's the concrete just like flapping like it's effing paper in the wind. It's wild. Um, Mother Nature's all crazy. But anyways, there's two ways we can prevent this bridge from falling. We can either add more support to the bridge, or we can add more connections between the pre-existing supports on the bridge that are currently holding it up. Uh, life is the same. Uh, as you go through life, if things become challenging, if you don't want to break, you need to find more people for your party, or you need to become closer to the ones that you already have. But either way, you need people, and you need to rely on them. Uh, like, f life is a multiplayer game. For those of you, uh, and for those of you social outcasts that are saying that you have no friends, uh, there's a 90% chance that's false and you do have friends, okay? But if that's really you, one day I'll try and make an episode on how to have a conversation and an episode on how to make friends maybe. Uh, but that's still a bit iffy since I don't even know how I made friends. It kind of just happened in college. There's like one dude in college. I like messaged him on Zoom in my physics class. And he's probably like the only reason I have friends at all because he like kept introducing me to people he was good at like I i'm good at interacting with people but he was good at keeping a connection with people and making friends and so he just introduced me to his and he kept around he kept staying around me for some reason and uh with some other circumstances met a bunch of people that you know for some reason they continue to talk to me every day but that's uh that's that's how more or less how it happens to me but before college i was kind of also uh, alone really um aside from a few people near the tail end of high school then i you know started talking to a more few few more people i started talking to uh or i started interacting with some more people on a bit more of a consistent basis i would go out a little bit more with other people not to do drugs don't worry and, and don't know drugs <laughs> but um yeah it was uh near the that that pop was so loud holy crap it was near the tail end of high school that i started trying to talk to people a bit more but before that i was kind of a floater i was a. Uh, I wasn't a social outcast. So I like I wasn't like, oh, people looked at me and they're like, no one's gonna talk to that. I talked to everyone and I loved everyone in my high school. They were really cool, they were really nice, more or less. And um they all treated me pretty well. But it was just that I never really got close enough to like consistently talk to like one group of people. Like whether it's not there's cliques in high school for sure, but it's not like any negative connotation thing. Like it's not like they're it's not like they're fighting drama. My high school didn't really have any drama, more or less. It was just yeah, certain people hung out with certain people because you hang out with the people that you like to hang out with, and it's fine to not like to hang out with everyone. That's you know normal. And so overall, I never really had one. I just kind of talked to everyone. I floated. I, I went around all the groups, talked to all the weirdos, talked to all the quote unquote popular. There wasn't too many quote popular end quote people in my high school, but, um, you know, it was, 
I just talked to everyone, but I never really, it was like a, everyone loves me, but no one likes me kind of thing. If you've ever seen Bojack Horseman, I guess. Um, anyways, uh, you heard enough about me in the last episode, right? I haven't talked about the title of this episode really, uh, which I'll do more in this and the next point here. Um, my version will be in the next point for, so for what I came up with and what I thought of when I said, uh, remember to look up, uh, or when I thought of remember to look up. But first, I want to delve into what Stephen Hawking said. Remember to look at the stars, not your feet. Shout out Stephen Hawking. His loss was very sad, but, you know, uh, yeah, that was when I was in 10th grade. But he did some really, really cool things, and he's a super inspiration to literally anyone. I mean, uh, he was a genius for sure, and maybe that one, that's not as inspirational. But the fact that he was able to act on that genius with having a, a disease that prevented him from moving nearly every single muscle in his body is quite impressive. But... Uh, Hawking was a theoretical physicist and a cosmologist, a, a astronomist or whatever uh, you want to call it. So that's why the quote from him, uh, the quote is from him, right? The, look at the stars because he looked at the stars. That's what he studied. Um, and so that's why it holds weight. But I'm sure that to one extent, he didn't mean completely literally to look at the stars. Uh, it was probably at, at least a little bit figurative. Um, make sure you look up and not down sort of thing, which was, you know, what I'm going to talk about because I love space, but I'm a bit rusty on my cosmology, unfortunately. Um, the reason I say cosmology is because I there's astronomy and astrology, and I don't know which one's the fake science. I think it's astrology, but I don't want to accidentally say it like the fake one and like act like that's the real one. Astrology or astronomy, whichever the one it freaking is, is like the I'm a I'm a Libro or a uh I don't even know the words Caprius Capricorn or something. I don't know, man. Like whatever it is, you know, all that. Yeah. All the dumb stuff, Virgo, whatever the freak, you know, people that do that. I make fun of those people. Don't do that. Okay. I think it's astronomy, but I'm not sure. And every time I fact check it, I forget two minutes later. So it doesn't really, I just say cosmology because it's just said the same thing. Study of the study of the cosmos, study of the universe, whatever you get the point. But um, the one thing that I do remember about space is that uh, the stars are formed when a bunch of gas and uh, dust particles get squeezed together by gravity. And once the initial gas cloud is done collapsing and drawing more stuff for a few million years, really short time, really uh, later, it starts to shine due to nuclear fusion. And then one day the star attempts to fuse iron together, Fe on the periodic table. I don't know why Mendeley have called it that. And it goes kaboom. Very fun. Now that you've gotten your space fact for the day, it's usually a pretty good idea in life to look up. When we figuratively look down, we're sad, dejected, realizing that we're not smart enough to do that, the major that we wanted in college. Yeah, uh, if you're uh, audio, I just looked down. That was funny. It was a funny joke. Yeah, but uh, you didn't get to see that funny joke, but you just got to hear my dejected voice. Regardless, Although it can be quite fun to be sad and wallow in a massive puddle of self-pity, we've all done it. We all want to do it, okay? It's good to go ahead and look up, look forward, uh, you know, because looking down and wallowing in your self-pity, that's not exactly a great way to move forward. I mean, you can try to move forward by looking down, but you're probably going to trip and fall down a flight of stairs, and now not only is your ego destroyed, but your legs are broken too. And uh, no one wants broken legs, to the best of my knowledge. You know, that was one of the most like Instagram post inspirational things I've ever said on this podcast. I'm cringing a little bit, I'm not going to lie. The look up thing, hey man, if you want to look down, look down. Okay, me personally, I look down all the effing time. All right, when I'm walking across my college campus, I don't look up. I don't know why. Sometimes I'm like, why am I looking down? It's not like I like don't want to make eye contact with people. Um, but I just look down. I don't know. Maybe I don't want to trip or something. I'm just looking at the ground and like what's there, what's not there. I look up when I'm crossing the road, I guess, but uh, <laughs> that's anyways, that's why we look up not to have broken legs. Right. Even though I just said that looking down will prevent you from tripping, but don't listen to me. Right. <laughs> just listen to me. 
God, uh, that's why we look at the stars and not our. Oh, Jesus, what is? What am I? What am I doing here? That's why we look at the stars and not our feet. Unless, of course, you're an astrologist. I think I did write it. I wrote it with like a little bit of confidence in the script. That's it, it's an astrologist. Please, God, don't don't let astrology be the false one. In which case, you look at the stars to study them, or maybe you're just a normal person and you look at the stars because they look pretty, or maybe that's a lot of uh, reasons to stare at the stars. And there's very few few reasons to stare at your feet unless you uh just got a really nice new pair of kicks then uh you know or someone scuffed your jays uh, but you can't beat that person out up without looking up especially if like me you're short it's not exactly an optimal way to put a hurting on someone but i'm a weakling so i hurt people by calling them trash cans violence isn't the answer i was gonna make a world war three joke right there but maybe that's a topic better left avoided i feel like youtube i will say hey the U- ukrainian president prime minister i'm not sure what man of government they have there but yo that guy's g that guy like he used to be an actor like he used to be a stand-up comedian and he's really really funny like oh man it was really fun i just saw some really funny clips on like reddit and this guy is like in the middle of fighting a war and he's still just like making jokes and it's hilarious but uh, shout out to that guy bro he's in history but yes look up not down if you if you look down at your phone while you're driving you'll crash honestly i don't know what else to say for this section section i don't know what else to say for this section i'm really lucky that I have some long reviews in the end. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't hit time on this one. I really am going to hit time. I'm 17 minutes in. But, uh, uh, I'm really lucky that I have the, 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 the kind of the short, just like me. I don't know where that joke came from. Uh, anyways, and that's why I'm always looking up. Although I do look down at my feet while, well, yeah, I already told you this, so I'm not going to, not going to waste our time here because we're, we're hitting limits right now. I think I'm going to cross like 25 minutes again. This is, I don't know why this keeps happening to me. I, I don't think my scripts are getting longer. I, am I just getting worse at talking? Probably. I really am, honestly. All right, last point, home stretch. Uh, and hopefully I'll have a bit more to say here since this is actually the part where I describe my personal philosophy and what I think remember to look up means, which again, I made that, all right? Remember, I made it. If you Google it and it says someone else did, don't listen to Google, listen to me. Um, <laughs> where I, uh, yeah. So remember to look up. Uh, This relates to the first point in this episode. Life isn't a multiplayer game. But here's the thing. When we're struggling, when we're in pain, one thing that people tend to do is put their head in their hands. They look down and maybe they, you know... Like that. I'm not going to touch my... I forgot to clean my glasses. I can, whoops. It shouldn't be an issue. You don't see anything, right? It's fine. Um, but they should... You know, when people tend to do, when they're struggling, pain, whatever they're going through, uh, they look down and maybe they shove their head in their hands. Uh, you lose energy, you lose strength, and you aren't always able to look at the stars. Uh, and when we're in this state, that's when... Or that's what's natural to us, to wallow to be sad, to be hurt, and feel pain, and hope maybe it magically goes away. And I have an episode titled, Be Sad. So, you know, being sad, I'm not against it. That's fine. I, 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 uh supported it in that episode. I'm going to have to hit you with the cold water and tell you that it probably won't magically go away though. Uh, But here's the thing. When you're in this state, when your head is in your hands, one thing we often forget why Uh, one thing we often forget and why we forget it. I'll talk about in a second. We forget to look up. We forget that there are people there and sometimes they put their hands on our shoulder and we are still completely unable to recognize that they're there. We forget to look up. We forget to look at the people that are there. We forget that people care. The people that either can or want to help. Then we ask, well, why do people, why do I do this. Remember how I said loneliness was pretty bad? Yeah, well, here's the sad part about loneliness. Lonely people are more likely to avoid social situations. Lonely people are more likely to engage in behavior that makes them more lonely. It's a snowball effect, or if you like big words, it's an insidious cycle. One of the reasons we may not look up is because we're distancing distancing ourselves due to our very unhealthy tendencies. Just as human beings, for some reason, when we feel bad, we want to make ourselves feel more bad. I don't know why it happens, but it happens. Jeez, I'm going to go over time so much right now. Another reason we may not look up is because you completely do not even think about the fact that people care. 
you forget or you don't know how there are people there that want to help them, that want to make sure you're good, bro, uh, and keep you. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I'm not, I, remember how I said I'm forgetting how to talk? This is this is this is it. I'm forgetting how to talk, uh, and you keep your head in your hands because if you don't, uh, because you don't even have a thought that says, if you look up, you'll see someone there. It's just not a thought. You know, I, I'm not sure how to word this perfectly, so I'm just going to be rambling on it. But uh, where was I? I'm looking up, I'm losing my spot here. Um, you're not trying to avoid things. You're not trying to avoid people. You genuinely just forget or don't know that someone is there. Uh, like my second exam in differential equations last semester. I'll never forget that moment. I walked into class and boom, surprised Pikachu face. It was it was wild. Uh, the third reason people may not look up is that they don't want to put the burden on other people. This is one of the main reasons usually. Usually we know people are there. We usually know people care and they want to be there, but we just don't want to make them feel bad. But although I said earlier that thing about the bridge and how the more stress you put on the bridge, you can ease that stress by adding more support or making more connections between the existing ones. A lot of people don't think that way. They think that they need to be stronger. They think that they need to be better just themselves. They don't want to make their friends or the people that they care about sad, and they should deal with it themselves, put on a mask with a smile on it, and pretend like they're okay in front of their friends. And it's noble, but it doesn't work <laughs> um, at all. They either know that you're lying because people are really good at detecting that, and the thing is, they actually feel more bad when you don't let them in, trust me. Um, if you care about someone and you know they're struggling, would you rather, tell, would you rather them tell you uh, and you can possibly do something about it or even if you can't do something about it? A lot of times you can't. I have a lot of knowledge and a lot of things and I've been through a lot of things. So I'm able to help a lot of people with a plethora of problems. And even if I'm not experienced in their issue specifically, I, I know enough things about enough things that I can go about making sure that they're fine and I, I can help them uh, navigate a way in, in, uh, or find a path or a channel that they can use to be fine. And so uh, not everyone has that knowledge. Not everyone studied you know, psychology for like three, four years of their life. Not everyone read all the books on psychology. Not everyone read uh, the, where, where is it? The Rewired Brain by, uh, uh, what, what's that guy's name? Uh, Ch Ch Dr. Schild. I don't know. His, his full name's not on, the, not on the spine of the book there. But yeah, it doesn't work when you when you're trying to hide it and stuff. Uh, uh, da, 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 where was I? If you care about someone and you know they're struggling, would you rather blah blah blah? I said that, and you can listen. Or would you rather that instead of that person telling you, you they just say that I'm fine as they wipe tears away from their eyes and not tell you anything. It doesn't exactly bring you closer together when they do that or when you do that. Uh, does it? Right? You know. So don't do this one. This is, a, you know, the worst reason you could possibly have to not share something with someone. Just the fact of, I don't want to make them feel. That's the worst reason. That's a terrible reason. A horrible, invalid reason completely. And so don't do this one. I mean, there's some people, if they're, no, no, they're, they're a horrible reason, completely. Point blank period is a horrible reason. Don't do it. End of story. I mean, this, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm an absolute statement, that one. Uh, just don't do it. Nuances are everywhere in life, and maybe you can find me a situation. I could probably find a situation. But overall, in general, don't do it. Just don't do it, okay? 99% of the time, don't do it. Just just follow the 99% of the time. Don't do it. All right? You're not special enough for the 1%. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Jeez. Um, but when I say it sounds like I'm saying cheese you know what oh yeah cheese um cheese but uh it doesn't exactly bring you that I said that this is what happens when you have a bunch of asides uh, tell the people that you care about what you're going through or at the very least admit that you're going through something and don't want to talk about it right so not wanting to talk about it is a much better reason than I don't want to tell you because I don't want to make you feel bad all right one of them is personal and uh you know, you're just saying how you feel. And the other one, you're assuming how someone else is going to feel. And that's not fair. You, you can't do that to someone else. You can't do that for someone else. Um, 
and you don't want to talk about it, as long as you're receiving assistance from someone or somewhere else, preferably professional assistance. So if someone's asking how you are and you're saying, not really great, but I don't want to talk about it, unless you're receiving assistance from somewhere else, you better be talking about it to someone. All right. Don't just, don't just keep it in. You're, you're, you're not good enough to do that. All right. Trust me. That's it. Being most human beings, 99.9% of human beings, even some of the most smartest and most resilient people I know, not capable of doing that. So don't try it. Okay. Just don't, don't, don't try it. You're not, don't, don't do it. Don't do it. You know, go to rehab when you're trying to quit drugs go to rehab. Okay. Don't just say pills no more. Like I said earlier, that was really funny. I want, I want to end this with saying what, uh, saying that people care. People love you. Uh, People want to see you prosper and they want to see you happy. And it's not that they hate seeing you upset. They just want to see you be joyous. Feel no shame in telling the people that care about your issues about your issues. That's what they're there for. You've heard my take on relationships. They're transactional. One of the clauses in that relationship contract is that, quote, you feel bad. You tell me I feel bad. I tell you, end quote. It's, it's, It's in there. All right, check. You can check the fine print. If you have a support system, use it. Why in the world would you not? That's why it's there for that. You know, that's what it's there for. And it's not like it has a number of uses. Like it's not like it has a finite number of uses and then it breaks, right? It's not like a, it's not like a battery in your phone, right? It's not just going to decrease in charge capacity over time. Honestly, actually for a support system, the more that you use it, the better it'll get at supporting you it'll it's compound interest and who doesn't love that it's like a leather wallet it's patina it just gets better over time okay and i will address the ant or the elephant in the room depending on who you are Uh, give me a second let me let me let me drink because i'm about to die here i said give me a second but you know obviously that gets cut for you say that you genuinely legitimately are listening to this episode and you can say i have no support system I have no one that cares. I was at points in my life where this was the case. It happened to me. I was at, I was in places in my life where more or less no one cared. I didn't have anyone to talk to. Although 99% of people that say that no one cares and they have no friends, they're lying completely. Okay. I was also at points in my life where I said, I have no friends when in all honesty, I had a lot of people that I could have talked to and that wanted to hear me talk. that wanted to listen to me that were there to listen to me and they were willing to listen to me. Uh, I, I, you know, I've been in that position. Uh, most of the time, these people want to be edgy. Uh, other times, you know, they're just, you know, they want, it's usually that they just want to be edgy, right? A part of them is just like, oh, I'm alone. And even though these people say I'm alone and I have no friends, this is what happens. They go home and they call someone and then they talk about their problems and they keep telling this one person that they're calling every day, maybe. I have no friends. How do you think that person feels, man? Like, it it can get quite aggravating if that's you. Then, hey, that person that you keep calling, that person that you keep texting, that person that you keep telling your problems, that person you keep telling that you're alone, that person is your friend. That person cares. That person wants to listen. That person is listening. Whether they want to or not, they're doing it. That's why you keep talking to them. And so that's generally the case. These people that they that they say they have no friends, and then every day they're talking to the same people. That's what what in the world, man? Like, I get someone can say, "Oh, this is because you're talking to people doesn't mean you're not lonely." Yeah, I get it. All right, I know. I've talked about it before, but dog, if you like, if you keep going back to the same people and talking about your problems and your very personal issues and your like and your pains and your struggles, I don't care what you're. That's that's. What's, that's friendship okay that's you signed the contract whether you knew it or not um but you know if you keep telling people that that basically are your friends even if you're not if you don't want to admit if you keep telling these people that they're you have no friends they can feel really bad and really sad and then you might go to a point where you legitimately have no friends so don't just say that look at the people in your life and really be honest with yourself do i really have no friends right and so like i've had people that come to me talk to me and they're just like yeah man i just have no i'm like yo what the what the frick am i doing here then like why am i listening to you right like why have i listened to you for so much time um 
But there's one person listening to the podcast. They've said this to me before. Hey, you, F you. I'm still going to talk to you, but F you. Anyways, things are going better for them, so it's fine. But um, if it truly is the case, if, if it really, like legitimately is the case that you have no one or, you know, because again, like I said, I've been there or you have some people you kind of know, but you're not that close with, that's understandable. Then, like I said, at the top of the episode, it's hard for me to teach you that. It's hard for me to teach you how to make friends and how to go about, you know, life, living, whatever it may be. Um, how bright is it outside? Why, uh, the light just seems like it's not very lighty. Uh, eh. It'll get color corrected, whatever. You'll see the light a lot more. I'll just take this. I'll just take the saturation and I'll, I'll I'll pump it. I have a friend who's in college, different colors than me, so I, I'm not seeing them every day. But I talk to them, and so they kind of have a hard time making friends. And I, uh, yeah, I want to. I, I maybe I should stop with the us. You know, I've been thinking about it. Do I just stop with the us? But I feel like for a podcast and for recording the video in real life, you know, just be okay with the silence. But if I'm recording. Is it better if I just say, uh, or I just pause? Because it just looks like I'm short circuiting if I pause. <laughs> because when I pause, like I pause, like everything stops. But I have a friend in another college, a hard time making friends. And obviously they're in another college. So I'm not really there for them. I may be their friend or whatever, but uh, I'm just not there. And that's like understandable, right? Like real life, their friends different than I talk to you online friend, right? And so understandable is fair. And they, uh, you know, if you feel maybe a little bit bad, you could, but overall, if you, if you don't admit that you're just dumb, I, dumb, I guess, I don't know, but it can happen. Right. And so it's hard for me, like even that person, like I've been trying to help them as best as I can uh, to, to like, what should you do? And they also have a counselor or therapist they, they see and they, they, their help there too. But, uh, I, like I can't give them like solid advice that they can perfectly follow a roadmap and then it works. Right. Cause again, I, I don't even know how I did it, but you know, even weeks and months of talking to this person, trying to help them out, like they're, they're moving forward. They're, they're making progress, but like weeks and months and they're just making progress. They're not done. And so that like, how can I just distill it all into one episode or two episodes? It's, it's tough. It's really tough. The first thing I'll say is, to look inwards. I'll, you know, this is some advice that I might be able to give you really quickly. First of all, look inwards. That's step number one. I'm a monk. Of course, I'm, in t- um, I'm not a monk. Uh, look inwards, right? I, I said that I've been at a point in my life where everyone hated me. It's happened. And I'm running. So I'm just going to read the script now. Completely script. I'm, I'm going full script. And, and the reason that I, you know, the reason was that I was really, really not a good person and people were absolutely right to hate me. Sure. You know, some people can say, oh, you just need to give them unconditional love and then they'll be fixed. And to be honest, yeah, the thing that really fixed me was someone giving me unconditional love in the end. I got lucky. But you know, I, I don't blame them. I can't blame them for not liking me. It was really the normal reaction to have to someone who was like the person that I was at the time. Uh, so the reason no one cared was my fault. If you're a jerk or you're a horrible person, yes, you're probably going to have to work on that first. And you do that with therapy or wait until I make the episode on how to change your personality completely. Uh, the other advice is go to therapy. Just just, just just go to therapy, okay? If you have social anxiety, they'll help you or they'll give you tips, strategies, and guides on how to go about taking the steps to making friends. The only thing that I can say in this episode is talk to people. And if it's okay, uh, and it's okay if you talk to someone and you don't want to be their friend. Maybe you think or behave in a way or maybe they think or behave in a way that just doesn't tickle your fancy and, you know, doesn't, don't have too high standards, right? That's just not good, but it's fine. If someone doesn't match you, it happens. That's why people go on dates and they're like, Hey, you're super cool. Just not like, I don't think that we, we should continue this. Like that's the right. Like you don't, you don't go out with every single person you go on a date with. Right. And so it happens. It's cool. Find the people that you click with and it may be tough. It might take time. It might take a few tries. Uh, it might take a while, but you just have to keep looking They're You know, they're there. Uh, and that's the quickest advice that I can give you. But, you know, also if it seems like everyone doesn't work again, look inside, look at yourself. If no one, if you don't like anyone and it seems like people aren't liking you either, you need to look inwards. It's a, it's a problem inside somewhere. It's not a matter of other people not being good enough, okay? 
But, you know, the other advice I can give you is that I heard uh, if you can share this podcast, you'll be 20 percent, 20 percent cooler. And that was 100 percent in a research paper for sure. Yep. Do it. (laughs) Usually I say that's all, but I think I'm going to stop doing that because I do indeed have an outro. And I'm not sure how many people stop listening after I say that's all. But I do want to talk about music and anime at the end of the episode before I log off. If you didn't know that, that's what I usually do. So now you know. Anyways, I finished watching Odd Taxi. Absolutely incredible. So good. Oh my God. It was insane. I loved it. It's a mystery thriller anime. And this anime is absolutely wild. It's incredible. The story is absolutely incredible and so massively well written. If you even watched, if you've ever watched a show that had loose ends and that it, they didn't get tied or they just were sloppily like tied up at the end, yo, then you'll love this anime. Okay. If that annoyed you, you'll love this one because it gives you so, it gives you loose ends for like 11 episodes and then it ties up every single one of them everything that happens in this anime happens for a reason each you know each episode is an absolute masterpiece it immaculately ties up every single loose end by the end of the story it is everything that happens is just for it's so 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 well put together if you like watch this anime it's like you finished a seven billion piece jigsaw puzzle by the end of it it is awesome it is very good i highly recommend it it has animals like the story is like animals but it doesn't really affect the story it's it's really just there for comedic comedic things so don't don't worry about it but highly recommend the other thing that i want to talk about is oshinoko i already told you that i've been reading this and so i wanted to give you a full full review i'm gonna hit another 40 minutes f me so hard uh, god dang it um yeah, but Oshinoko roughly translates to girl I sim for Japanese. You know, you have a lot of meanings for one word. And so there's a few other translations that are like really clever for this story. But anyways, if you look at the cover, it has a very bright and very out there idol on it. Uh, and let me tell you that it is nothing like the cover would insinuate. Going over just one, like this is the definition of don't judge a book by its cover. Going over just chapter one, it's an ongoing manga, by the way. I'm, I'm almost caught up to it. I have a few chapters to be caught up In in chapter one, we have a doctor, uh, and this doctor is a huge fan of an idol, Aichan, and he, that's that's the girl on the cover. Um, the doctor then randomly gets a patient in his clinic, uh, and lo and behold, it's Aichan, and she's pregnant with twins. Uh, the doctor, being a fan, is initially quite distraught, uh, and you know, unlike most anime protagonists, he puts his feelings to the side, and he says, hey, I know you are, but I promise to make sure that you have a safe delivery. And he continues to live up to that promise until he reluctantly dies. Uh, You know, happens uh, to the best of us. And then he gets reborn as her child. Wild. Uh, Yeah, the story seems dumb and stupid, but it gets very dark. And it's a look into the idol industry in Japan and the entertainment industry, not just the idol one. The entertainment industry in Japan is extremely interesting and it's, it's not an idol anime or idol manga. If you've ever seen or heard of Kaguya-sama, the anime or the manga, uh, it has the same author as that one. Uh, The story is incredible. The art is great. I'm still reading it. I'm almost caught up, but I highly, highly recommend it. It was so, so good. And I I forgot to write an actual outro here, so I guess I'm going to do that now. But that's all. Um, 40 minute episode again, editing. I thought I was going to finish editing this in like two hours, maybe one and a half. I was super excited, but just editing the audio is probably going to take me two effing hours. Okay. But so here we are now. Um, but yeah, another long, long episode. I, I swear, I don't mean to make this podcast go longer. We should, I don't, I, I'm not, I can't even promise what the time on these episodes will be. I guess I'm, I think I, I whenever I'm writing these show notes, I'm like, doesn't like, am I going to hit 20 minutes? Like, am I going to hit enough time on this? Holy crap. And then I'm just out here, just like 40 minutes, 30 minutes, especially because I'm ad libbing so much these days. But I, I'm starting to write a script for uh, a vaulted episode. Then I'm going to write another script for a vaulted episode. And then we'll write a script for next week's episode. And um, hopefully next week we're, we're back on uh, back on time. Maybe maybe not hopefully. Maybe you guys really like the longer stuff. And, and that's cool too. But uh, we'll see. We'll see as we... Uh, whatever happens, happens, right? 
That's all though for this episode. There, there it is. That's all though for this episode of Seriously Funny. Like I said at the top, please, please share this episode. That's how we grow. That's how we increase the amount of viewers in this podcast, and that's how uh, it keeps keep keeps me going to make. And not really keeps me going. It's a great, great consequence. But the biggest thing is that I get my thoughts out there. And uh, the second biggest thing is, yeah, I would really, I would really like it if uh, this helped people out. So if you have friends that you know are into this kind of content, this. Uh, Uh, philosophical slash not really philosophical how to live your life better self-help doo-doo garbage stuff you know if they read the subtle art of not giving a f give them this podcast maybe they'll enjoy it and uh maybe you'll have something to talk about and you'll make me famous that's the most important part right thank you so much for listening to this episode Uh, much love i will talk at you next week remember to look up peace